let's see what Altair can do for geographic plots for us. Uh, so I've got a bunch of examples here, and we'll just run through and, and see some of the things that Altair can do. It's, it's really pretty powerful here and uh, builds on top of the functionality of all the way at the bottom, D3, um, and as that's implemented in Vega and Vega Lite all the way up. Um, so let's run through and see what we got here. So let's connect to a, uh, to a kernel for our collab notebook here. Um, and we'll, we'll just use a web kernel. Um, and it should all work because uh, Altair is loaded up. So let's give it a shot. Uh, so Altair uh, has these data sets and Vega data sets. So here we're going to be working with all, all example data sets that are here. So all these plots should work for you if you have Vega data sets loaded up. Um, and let's do some plots with just lat lawn in geographic coordinates. Um, so an example here uh, is we're just going to go ahead and, and plot the, the points um, for all of the airport locations. Um, so we have all the lat lawns of the airports, um, and we can just we can actually uh, encode latitude and longitude directly. Um, we're able to do that through making the Albers USA projection. Um, Albers USA sticks Alaska and Hawaii down here. Um, we can see. And we can see that the name of, of each of these airports um, as they're plotted, right? Pretty cool. We get we get the tooltip for free um, and uh, for for almost free. And uh, here, yeah, we can we specify latitude, and longitude directly, um, and I'll tell you the projection. This is pretty cool, and this is uh, well beyond I think what what a lot of other Python libraries can do. Um, and this is just getting started. So there, there's a lot we we can do here. Um, a common map that you've seen is a corpleth plot, so we can make those two. Um, rather than doing points, right, we're going to actually use the geo shape uh, mark, and that's going to allow us to do um, to do a basic corpleth. So here, um, we've just used the states, and we're just filling it with this uh, flat color, right? For a corpleth, though, um, you know, we're we're going to want to fill it in. We'll, we'll take a look at an example of, of using data um, to fill it in. If we if we do the whole uh, we do the whole world, right? These are um, this is the Equi rectangular projection um, of the whole world. And you see the data set that was loaded here, right, is world 110 meters. So 110 meter is the uh, is the resolution of this um, loaded from the URL, right? So there's no, no data passing back and forth. Um, and there's a lot of different projections. Um, so Mercator, Orthographic, Albers. Um, we can go ahead and plot a few of those on a plot, and we'll use uh, Altair to actually uh, stick them all together here. Um, we'll concat all the charts and. And here we go, right? We've got uh, at least at least four different ways, and um, this is pretty cool. I, all of the projections um, that are made available through through D3 are, are available here, and um, that's really cool. We we get a lot of different ways to look at maps, and you can choose a projection which is appropriate for the visual task um, that you have. Um, so we can do uh, compound charts with maps. So here we just looked at points. We looked at maps. We can also go ahead and plot points right on top of a map. Um, so here. We're going to go ahead and plot the airport right on top of that core plot. Um, so these are all the airports, um, and we have that right on top of a core plot. That's helpful to have that as a background. And um, this is using, I think, uh, how many data points do we have here in the airports? Um, it's uh, it's pretty big, I think. Um, Three thousand, and that, that's a lot of points to put on a graph. Um, I want to see how many Altair could handle, um, so we're going to push it beyond the five thousand limit, and we'll we'll use um, we'll use the zip codes. I think uh, how many are there? I think there's it's about ten thousand uh, zip codes. Oops, we need data. Um, shoot. Here we go. Um, and extract the URL, right? Oh, we have to call it. Yeah, what am I thinking? Here we go. Yeah, so 42,000. Yeah, I was, I was way off. Um, so can Altair plot 42,000? Well, I'm going to show you, so of course it can. Um, but, uh, but but here it goes, right? So we can, we can go ahead and plot way more points using Altair. Uh, here we, we've encoded uh, the color using the leading digit. 40,000 points on a plot. No problem. Um, so pretty cool that we can do this, and and we get the cover. Um, yeah. So so you can you, you know the the sky's the limit here with the number of points. I guess uh, you you can do a lot. Um, in addition, you know rather than showing every point, we can do aggregation in Altair. So this is, we're going to use the aggregate transform. Um, so here we can group by state and count. So we're going to take the same airport data, um, but we're going to go ahead and do this aggregation um, because we're using the URL for it. Right, we have to do the aggregation in Altair. 
Um, we can't do the aggregation in pandas uh, because we're using the URL. This makes the graphic a little more transportable um, by doing that in JavaScript. Um, so it's all going to embed into the into the graphic. And so here, right, we can look at just the uh, the aggregated number of um, of airports. Right, a little bit cleaner. Two hundred and sixty-three in Alaska. Uh -huh. So chloropath, right? We talked about uh, you know we had a gray chloropath. Um, we can actually go ahead and encode color on a chloropath. Here's uh, an example. Um, we can do population. I think that one that one's pretty common. So here's a state ID and population. The key here is that the ID on the uh, state is going to match the ID on the on the actual uh, topo JSON itself. Um, so topo feature, right? This is going to be a, a topo JSON uh, data set. And uh, here, right, the ID has to match. And what we can do is we can do a lookup on Altair to go ahead and, and join these two together. So we're doing the join here right in Altair. And this is going to uh, join and do, do the color. Um, there's a few notes here on, on how to use the ID column to correspond. Um, right, if you wanted to go and you had a data set that, that didn't necessarily have this ID in it, you could go add the ID to your data set would be the way to do it. And you can do that by going and pulling the IDs. Out of um, out of this data itself, um, so you can go, you know, we could go look at this data um, if we wanted to make sure that they match. This example just works, right? But but it won't just work if you have data that, that isn't so formatted. So here, you know, we can just go and uh, actually look at this directly. Um, this is going to be a, a JSON. And let's see, so here, right, this is these are actually the arcs that are being plotted. Um, but if you were to look through this a little bit, you can go and look at the ID attached to every state. Um, and well, it's a bit messy in this format. <laughs> but if you want to do it, you, you could actually go process this in Python and it wouldn't be wouldn't be too crazy to go and pull out the the um, the ID of each state and then you could add that to your data. Um, I've had to do this. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Uh, so that's that's the basic chloroplast. You know, Altair gives us a lot of options. Um, we can get more and more plots together. Like it's easy to just go ahead and do three different chloroplasts. So here we're showing three different variables, um, and we're using a, a vertical a vertical facet here. Um, pretty easy to do. Um, pretty fun. And here you you can also wrap. We did vertical. You can also wrap. So this is going to go ahead and uh, and show. Uh, I break down by the actual um, by the actual count group and then a uh, different chloropath for each. So yeah, kind of cool. Um, here, if we, if we look at this one a little bit, what we're doing is we're actually faceting um, by this group variable, um, income group. Um, so we can look at the distribution across each of those groups. So pretty cool. We're not coding up a bunch of different chloroplasts. Um, those are all at state level. I, I think sometimes it's useful to look at a finer level. You can go down to counties too. Um, here, right, we're just going to have to um, specify that we want the counties level top of JSON. And this is what we get, right? We're down at the county level. Uh, pretty cool. Um, and and uh, one of these I want to show is pretty powerful. Um, this is a this is a more detailed example, um, or sorry, it's a more complex example, right? There's a lot going on here. Um, is we can use uh, the interactions on Altera to build something uh, that um, interacts and uses the map itself. So here, right, we're again showing the, um, we're showing the airports. Right, but what we can do on the airports is we can do um, the connections on a hover only, right? So here we'll show the connections on hover, um, just by the nearest one we're hovering to, um, which is pretty cool because, right? Um, you know, if we were to go and plot all these lines on the map, right, it'd be way too many to see. Um, but here we've shown the size for the number, right? So you can see really well connected, um, really well connected in Atlanta, um, right? Let's see if we can go find O'Hare. Yeah, um, yeah. So pretty cool. And um, one more I want to show uh, because this is something that that I, I like to plot with is uh, lines on a map. Um, so you can actually use um, use data that's continuous and plot it on a map. Here, um, these data are from the are from the tube lines data set, um, which are going to go and specify the the lat lawn of each of these, right? Um, so yeah, it's it's going to use you know latitude longitude as, as cx cy. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and plot lines too. So really anything on a map, we've got all the different projections as backgrounds. Um, we can do all the geographic plotting we want in Altair. I think this is a really powerful uh, type of visualization to, to do with Altair.